Jersey, so you can watch NCIX on YouTube, join us on Facebook and Twitter, and most importantly, you can join us here at Aberdeen Mall to meet the new Windows. We've got lots of cool Windows 8 demos, and I'm going to take you guys around for a tour of all the awesome booths that are here on display. And I've taken over yet another booth. This is the Seagate booth where they have all their products on display as well as, yes, the swag is available to be taken. These are like the most amazing bouncy balls ever because they light up like this, which is pretty awesome. But obviously Seagate isn't all about bouncy balls. They also make magnetized refrigerator clips, which are the best thing ever. Keep your chips fresh, keep your documents fresh, whatever it is. You actually know Seagate makes hard drives. So let's have a look at what all they've got here. This is the Backup Plus. This is an external backup drive that has a plus on it because it also backs up your social media files, such as photos off of your Facebook. They've also got a number of other Seagate three and a half inch products here, including their, oh did I say three and a half? Ah, yes, their Slim Drive. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. So we've got the Backup Plus 2.5 inch form factor. So these are basically the same thing except bigger capacities and smaller capacities. However, this is still a one terabyte drive in a very slim form factor. If you don't want even that thick though, you can go all the way down to the Seagate 2.5 inch slim. I'm gonna do my classic iPhone 4 size comparison here. This is an extremely thin 2.5 inch external drive. It is also part of their GoFlex family, which means you have a very flexible interface on the back. This one on here is USB 3.0 right now, but you can swap it out to other ones should you see fit. That's the Slim right there. And then we've got a Backup Plus in another color. Yay, more colors. Okay, moving on to the desktop products. This isn't quite a desktop product, but this is the Momentus XT. You've probably seen my Tech Tips video about it on the NCIX comm channel before. It's a hybrid drive, uses SLC flash as a cache, and a 750 gig magnetic drive for vault storage. Everything is done on the fly and you will never even be aware that anything's going on except that your system will be faster. This is another Momentus XT. This is a Barracuda drive. This is your standard power of one desktop drive. That means one terabyte ladders as well as one simple SKU. So instead of confusing things by having a performance SKU and a value SKU and a mid-range one, Seagate just built a fast drive and then they sell it at one price with one terabyte ladders, which means it's fast and efficient to everyone. Available in a number of capacities, including one terabyte, two terabyte, and three terabyte. And that, my friends, is the Seagate booth. All right, here I am at the Patriot booth. Patriot, you might know, has memory in a lot of different colors. See, we got Christmas, Stealth, and Blue. They also have USB flash drives, which are available in a variety of different colors and speeds and form factors and whatever you want. But what you're probably not aware of is Patriot's branching out into keychains. So this is an all new project from Patriot. Actually, no, this is just swag. This is just a bottle opener keychain. Check this out. This is the gauntlet and the gauntlet node. So the gauntlet basically just comes with a hard drive inside and the gauntlet node just doesn't come with a hard drive inside, but you can put in whatever you want. You can even put in an SSD if you want. And what this is, is a wireless repository for all of the data you might want to use on your tablet, such as your iPad. So this gauntlet right here actually has a 320 gig drive in it right now. And instead of running, is it because I like, oh, Okay. We'll be back. Technical difficulties. And we're back. There you go. We've got cars running now, so we're going to go ahead and skip to wherever we want to go. And of course, we have all of the rights and approvals to display cars on our video here, but don't worry about it. The point is, if you're on a long trip in the car, you want to have enough videos to keep everyone entertained, you can actually run multiple tablets and devices off of the gauntlet at the same time. So, if, you know, if you're a technologically inclined family, every kid in the back's got their own iPhone anyway, then you can have all the entertainment everyone needs in one place, and you can just plug it into, like, your car charger and make sure that it stays charged, no big deal. It doesn't come with that accessory, but you can find an adapter pretty easily. So thank you for checking out my overview of the Patriot booth, and don't forget to stop by and get a pen if you get a chance. These are actually awesome pens. One thing I forgot to mention, guys, is it has support for Android, iOS, and Kindle Fire, and can stream to up to five devices simultaneously. So I did say multiple devices, but I never said five. One other advantage it has over other similar products is the fact that you can transfer data to and from it using USB 3.0, which is a lot faster because 
especially in that example I gave before of like a road trip. You're on the way out the door for a road trip. You really want to wait another like 15, 20 minutes for USB 2 transfer speeds? I think not. Welcome to the Linksys booth where they have Linksys products on display. I bet I surprised you there. So they've got everything from their super high-end E8 4500. This is a dual band N900, concurrent N900 rather, app-enabled router. So what that means is you can run, well, apps on it. You can also use Cisco Cloud Connect in order to control your router remotely. Now there's also some routers here that are lower-end app-enabled routers, such as the EA2700, and then some more basic stuff. So the EA2500 is more like a last-generation EA2700 that does not have Cisco Cloud Connect, but it is otherwise quite similar. Similar. And then we've also got some lower end stuff, so uh, Linksys by Cisco has some value oriented products including even their E900 for only 49 bucks. You can tell that it should be cheaper because it's smaller than an EA4500, right? Something to note about the EA4500 actually is we were shooting an episode of NCIX Tech Tips not that long ago and on a 2 megabit up, 25 megabit down connection we had multiple torrents running, we had FTP downloads going, someone was streaming on XSplit, uh, we had Netflix running and we had a Skype call going and this thing barely even felt it compared to one of the other routers that we were using that did not perform nearly as well. So it's about more than just how many gigabit ports and how many wireless in antennas it has in it. The processing inside, the software, the firmware, all actually makes a difference. Don't forget, Linksys also has other products like their wireless and range extender, their media entertainment bridge, so this means you can use wireless connectivity to bridge it back to your network and connect up to four devices such as around your HDTV. And finally, well, you need wireless adapters if you're going to have a wireless network. Welcome to the WD booth where the number of the day is four because there are six golf tees in here. Funny, right? Uh, four because there are four hard drives on display here. Okay, so let's have a look at what we got. My passports are now available in a wide variety of different colors. There's also the new edge line, which I actually don't see here at the booth, but those are really, really cool. So they're super, woo, and I'm knocking everything over. Super slim external hard drives that are very, very, very slim, and you don't actually lose any performance, so that's kind of awesome. But the big deal right now for WD is their line of routers. So now they have wireless networking. They have a whole line of routers from the MyNet N600 to the 750 to the 900 to the N900 Central. So the only difference between the N900 and the Central is that the Central has fewer gigabit ports, fewer USB ports, but it does have a hard drive built inside it so it can operate like a time capsule for example. The N900 also has a really cool feature called Fast Track Plus. Fast Track Plus analyzes the kind of network traffic that you have on your network dynamically, automatically, on the fly, and optimizes for the things that it deems to be most important, such as your Netflix stream, your Skype call, or your games, and then deprioritizes things like torrent downloads or whatever else other people are doing on your network. So it does all of that without actually any user input whatsoever. Very cool stuff. Welcome to the ASIO booth where they have like the coolest glowing sign. Oh, it doesn't actually glow, it's a trick. There's an LED strip under it. Okay, well I thought that I thought that I was gonna be able to like wave this thing around. It's gonna be okay. okay, no, no, it's okay. They have cool products at their booth and that makes up for my disappointment about the glowing sign. So, check this out. If you've been watching my unboxings for a while, you've probably already seen all this stuff. Well, some of it, because this is their super de duper tricolor illuminated keyboard. This thing's freaking awesome because you can change the colors just like that. And it has nice big letters and numbers, which is great for my mom. So she actually has the one that I unboxed. She loves it because she can find all the keys in the dark, which is what illuminated keys are all about. We've also got a Mech 5. So if you guys don't remember what's cool about the Mech 5, there's a good number of things. So number one, is the fact that it has all mechanical keys, unlike some of their mechanical keyboard, sort of gaming keyboard competitors. It has a detachable number pad and comes with an optional accessory cable that allows you to even plug it into this side. Yeah, I forget that, there it is. Plug it into this side, you can plug it into this side, or you can just plug a USB cable into it and run it completely separately if you want. Still mechanical key switches, and I'd love to get this off if I could. Cherry MX Black, right there. 
very solid build quality. You got your programmable keys here. You got more programmable keys here that can be slid around and positioned wherever you want. You can turn the Windows key on and off, which is a good gaming keyboard feature. And you got your built-in volume control knob and all of that good stuff. Just generally kind of an awesome keyboard. It's also got optional rubberized top keys caps here. See? So you got like perfect grip on your arrow keys, your WASD keys. ASIO also has some new products. So while you might know their keyboards, you probably don't know about their mice. The AZ2000 is coming soon. And they also have headsets that are coming very soon as well. Love the folding microphone on this one because you won't look like a total doofus if you actually wear it out and about like you would with a boom mic that folds up here. So thank you for checking out the ASIO booth and I'll see you at the next one. Welcome to the Corsair booth. Most of this you've probably seen before, such as their Vengeance K90 mechanical keyboard, their HX series power supplies, the H100, the 800D, all of this is good stuff. However, I bet you haven't seen this before. This is the new 2013 edition of the H60. It comes with an all new pump tubing water block unit as well as one of Corsair's static pressure optimized fans. So this is going to perform significantly better than the older H60 and as you can see way better obviously than an Intel box cooler. So that is part of their new line of liquid coolers and we're going to go ahead and move right over here where we have more Corsair stuff on demo in the NCIX PC and more gigahertz. Thank you. More gigahertz thanks to the crazy Russian and the NCIX PC 3D vision surround gaming setup. Are there guys that I can shoot? Are they like bad guys? Oh, that's a bad guy. He's right there. There we go. Awesome. So here we have the Corsair 500R. We've also got a GTX 690 running in this case off of an AX850 power supply, Dominator Platinum memory. We've got their Corsair SP2500 speakers, which are pretty much as far as computer speakers go in a 2.1 configuration, about as good as it gets these days. We've got dual Corsair Neutron GTX SSDs in RAID 0 and a Corsair H100 cooler running to top out this all Corsair sort of awesomeness machine. Finally, an M60, a K90 keyboard, and Corsair's all new line of mouse pads is finally something that we can demo as well. Here we are at the General Windows 8 booth, which is a showcase of the wide variety of different devices you can run Windows 8 on. So everything from a custom Vesta i1 PC, which is a whoopsie daisy, a uh, decked out gaming machine, all the way down to something like a TX600 tablet. This is a super slim tablet running Windows RT, and it is butter, butter smooth. It has a Tegra 3 processor as well as an, it's just an extremely thin form factor and an absolutely beautiful, beautiful screen. Gaming notebooks, fully enabled by Windows 8. Also moving right along over here. And you've got updates from all the various manufacturers, so Ultrabooks from HP, as well as Asus. Also more gaming notebooks, such as the G75, have received the Windows 8 treatment. So this is very, very high-end stuff. This is GTX 660M with two gigs of memory and everything you've come to expect from ASUS's G75 series, including great performance, great cooling, and now with Windows 8. In case you guys were wondering what size your TV has to be for me to be actually bigger on TV than I am in real life, the answer is 75 inch. So here on display at the Windows 8 launch party, we have Samsung 75 inch, 1080p, super slim bezel, slim bezel, slim bezel, with rose gold around the edges, TV that is just like crazy. Like, look how big this thing is. Look at me standing next to it. Not like kind of a dwarf, but like still, it's huge. Now, HP doesn't have a ton of devices on display here at the show, but these are a couple cool things that come with all HP consumer Windows 8 machines. So, this is their getting started with Windows 8 little tutorial center. Uh, these are all hosted online, so as long as you have an internet connection, you'll be able to access it. It shows you a whole bunch of neat stuff, including how to make navigating Windows 8 simpler for you, an overview of the new features, how to use apps, how to use the store. This is the kind of thing that is very useful for people who aren't familiar with the OS already and need a bit of a, a, bit of a primer before they can really get into it and make efficient use of it. So we're going to go ahead and uh, close this one down. Let me just go to the charms menu. Yeah, see, apparently I need a tutorial on how to use Windows 8 myself because I can't figure out how to close this. There we go. 
Start menu. Oh yeah, start button. That would have done it. Thanks, Slick. Okay, another cool thing is their connected music powered by a Meridian thing. So what this is, is it's a cloud server that doesn't actually store your music, your photos, and your videos. What it does do is it more like indexes them. So if you've got a bunch of music on your desktop and you've got you know your DRM licensed content or whatever that can't be played wherever you want, what it does is it takes that and enables you to sort of link back to it and play it back on even iOS or Android devices with the enabled apps that are available for those. So it's cool because you don't have to buy a bunch of multiple copies of things. So what it is is it's kind of like a media location aggregator software uh, that's all stored in the cloud without actually having any of that data stored on the cloud so you don't have to pay for any of the storage. Very cool stuff. Welcome to the Lenovo booth where we have one of the coolest all-in-one machines that I've seen in quite a while. So all of the hardware for this guy is housed in this tiny little aluminum enclosure here on the bottom. It's just absolutely beautifully crafted. It uses a unibody structure. You can see the base screws on from here on the bottom. It's got rubber feet so it's not going to go anywhere. Let's just move this around to the back. You can see uh, where your power is, where your I.O. ports are. And then here we've got another beautiful aluminum piece right here that holds up the gigantic 27 inch oh yeah cooling check that out more io hdmi out hdmi in this is handy i like to see this because it means you can repurpose it once the machine gets obsolete and then a huge fat copper heat sink inside just very well constructed quite heavy full edge to edge glass on the front and again this is unibody aluminum all on the back here no seams here nothing like that so it's actually assembled from the front. Now what's cool about this is you can use it as a normal all-in-one. Do 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 here I am using my touchscreen Windows 8 computer and I'm using my start menu and I'm multitasking like a boss. Then you can go, okay, I want to use this as like more like a tabletop machine. Now you can use it like that. Very cool stuff. So here we are at the Acer booth where there's some cool stuff. We actually stole one of their cooler demos. That's the uh, the 23 inch 10 point multi-touch IPS monitor up there with the uh, demo that I'm going to be doing in a couple minutes on the stage. But there's a couple other really cool things here as well. So this is not a Windows RT tablet. I don't know if it's actually charged. I think the charger got lost in transit or something, but don't worry about it. This is a full Windows 8 tablet. It is extremely thin. I'm going to do my classic iPhone 4 thickness comparison here. Got all your usual sort of suspects for I.O. You got your power, your micro SD, your SIM card, your HDMI, your USB, headphone, power, all that good stuff. And a docking station which turns it into a full Windows 8 notebook essentially with a USB port just in case you wanted to, you know, use something like that. So, I think this is incredibly cool because unlike Windows RT devices, you are not limited to only installing applications from the Windows Store. Now, the other one that I think is incredibly cool is the Aspire S7. Again, and with the, uh, with the iPhone 4 thickness comparison, this is an extremely slim, extremely well-built little Ultrabook. Actually, I don't know if it's an Ultrabook because I don't know if it has the Intel branding on it, but it's a very slim notebook. It has an aluminum top that has a very gorgeous finish on it. It's got the full set of I.O. that you'd expect from a notebook, including micro HDMI, USB 3, another USB 3 power button, as well as your headphone microphone jack and micro SD expansion. And it is a touchscreen device, which basically just means it is just totally balling out given this tiny little form factor. Look how small this thing is. One more cool machine at the Acer booth that we missed. In order to enable slimmer and slimmer form factors, they've had to get a little bit creative to the point where it's like futuristic type ridiculous stuff. So there's a button on the top where a little motorized panel comes out, full size HDMI, two USB 3.0 ports, and a Thunderbolt port are all concealed by this button right here that slides the ports in and out like that. Pretty cool, hey? Welcome to the MSI booth where they have the usual complement of Windows 8 ready devices such as performance graphics cards, less performance graphics cards but still pretty freaking sweet, and then even less performance graphics cards as well as a bunch of cool motherboards including their Big Bang Z77 M Power which I think is freaking awesome because they do a 24 hour 
Prime 95 burn-in test under overclock settings before shipping out any of those ports. They've also got a lot of value Thunderbolt options available. This particular one right here with a Thunderbolt port is the GD65 board, I think. Hold on, what is this? Hold on, I'm gonna click. Sorry guys, this is the Z77A GD45 Thunderbolt, so this is a very value-oriented Thunderbolt option. And their GD65 board, which has been around for a while as well as, this is sort of a weird form factor, check this out. This is the H61M E33W8. This is technically an MATX board because of the height of it, but this is probably the smallest MATX board I think I have ever, ever seen. Here we are at the Samsung booth where they've actually got some of the most exciting stuff we've seen at the show. Uh, number one here is their Series 5 touchscreen Ultrabook. So this guy is fully Windows 8 ready, touchscreen, multi-touch, all of that good stuff, all the zooming and whatever else that you could possibly want to do. I've already done an NCIX Tech Tips about this one though, so I'm not going to go into too much depth. The other really cool stuff I have here is the Ative S. So this is kind of, think of it in terms of Compared to an Android phone, this is kind of like a Galaxy S3, but running Windows 8. So there's not too much in terms of customized Samsung software yet, because it's not really that finalized. But in terms of the hardware, this thing is absolutely beautiful. So it has a faux brushed metal backing on it. It has an 8 megapixel camera on the back, 2 megapixel camera on the front. The, whoop, there we go. The screen is absolutely beautiful. I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see this, but the viewing angles on this thing are ridiculous. You can read it from like, yeah, probably legitimately 178 degrees. We've seen a lot of devices rated for 178 degree viewing angles. I've very rarely seen one that is actually legitimately readable from there. Um, so that is just outstanding. It's very responsive, very snappy. Probably the one killer app on it right now, like I said, this isn't finalized software yet, is Family Story. So it's kind of like, um, a private Facebook, if you have a Samsung device, you can use that, you get a gig of cloud storage, free of charge. Comes with your Samsung device. Very, very cool stuff, nice big screen. So I'll do, haha, I'm gonna do my usual iPhone size comparison. So there's my iPhone 4. So it's quite a bit bigger. Again, more like a Galaxy S3 sort of form factor, but not running Android, running Windows. What happened? And next we've got a really cool tablet from Samsung. So this guy's basically got all the same stuff as the Smart PC Pro. And you can actually see there's some uh, there's some pictures on the desktop here of what will be the replacement for this guy. Hold on, where'd it go? And of course I'm looking at the wrong thing here. Is this it? Yeah, there we go. So this one's gonna have like a whack load of USB ports. It's gonna have, uh, hopefully we can get that to rotate there. I think, we've, I think auto rotate is off right now. Auto rotate is on, there we go, folks. So we can scroll, it's got like, yeah, whack load of USB ports, it has a magnetic dock. Uh, really, really cool stuff. So this one right here actually was the reference design and was given out to thousands of developers. So pretty much anything that was developed for this kind of a platform was developed on this device. It has a core i5 processor, which means this is not running Windows RT. This is running a full-fledged Windows 8 OS, which means you can install desktop applications. You can do pretty much whatever you want on it that you'd be able to do on a desktop, except that it can be converted into a tablet using the dock connector right here. Let's go back to, uh, where was the stylus at? It's external. Oh, on the external new model, stylus. On the new model, okay, on the new model it slides in, but this one it's external. You can actually use the stylus to use, haha, see that? We've got our usual suite of Samsung applications, which you can find right there. So you got your S Note, your S Camera, your S Player, all that branding you're familiar with. S Note is kind of cool because there's a ton of different stuff you can do with it. So we were playing around with this a little bit before. You can see you can actually turn it on so you can use your hand to write on it, which didn't work because I had the, oh, hold on. Give me a sec here, guys. I'll figure out what's going on here. Live demos, right? So we turned auto rotate off, we turn it back on, we close the app, we open the app. Now it's working fine. You can switch to pen only mode. Now my finger does nothing. But what's cool about this is now I can actually write on this thing as if it's an actual writing surface. So I can say, hello. And you know how normally just the screen will go nuts because your palm is all over and it's designed for, it's designed for touch. This just turns off that capacitive layer and then now I can switch back, I can write with my finger or I can write with the pen and I have all the options in the world. You can actually switch between different pen tips. So if you go for something like a uh, felt tip, it has, I think it was something stupid like a thousand, okay, let's go with a different one. 
Let's go with uh, this guy right here. It has something like a thousand different uh, levels of pressure. So you can draw something really fine like this, or you can draw something really dark like this, and anything in between, depending on how hard you're pressing on the screen. If we go to one of the other notes, we were playing around with this before while I was learning how to do the demo, and uh, there's handwriting recognition, which is in here. Some oh yeah, you can... Hold on, give me a sec guys, I'll find where the handwriting recognition is. I nubbed out on the, uh, the, pa on the handwriting recognition, so you just switch to this mode right here, and all you gotta do is write something like slick is lame and does not wash. Wow, I almost, it almost got it, it almost got it right up to the very end. Uh, so considering that I'm just writing like super, super messily and not really worrying too much about being tidy about it, that's pretty darn cool. And then if you want, you can also just, of course, draw all over it and draw a little happy face. There's a bunch of other cool stuff you can do. So you can actually add pictures. You can take a picture using the, uh, the camera built into the device. You can kind of go, yeah, okay, there's a chair. That chair is really important to my, uh, to my presentation. So I can go ahead and resize that down and uh, reposition it. I go, yeah, that chair is really important. We're going to go ahead and scroll down. This is, this is the chair. There you go. And you can also add things like audio clips as well, which is pretty darn cool. So thank you for checking out our little preview of the Samsung booth, and we're going to move right along. Who says Windows 8 is not great for gaming? We've got an Asus 144 hertz monitor here. We're moving right along. We've got another very premium Asus machine, gaming machine, mind you, and it's running in an ITX form factor. So this is a pretty cool little beast right here. It's got a GTX 660 Ti DirectCU 2. It's got an Intel Core i7 in there. It's got like eight gigs of RAM. See this daughter board that's sticking off the bottom of that Z77 ITX motherboard? That's the power delivery. So this thing is a very, very capable little machine and in a tiny, tiny form factor. Yeah, it's not actually this big. It's, it's only this big. That's just the outer housing. Also, we've got the all new sensation. So this is again a Windows 8 machine, touchscreen. Actually, gorgeous panel on this. It's probably readable up to about here before the, uh, the, uh, the glass layers start to obscure things a little bit. That's outstanding. This is an all-in-one that has the bulk of the computer built into the bottom here. So you got tons of I.O. USB 3, audio, probably USB 2, could be USB 3. USB 3, two USB 3s right there. On the other side, check this out. Two USB 3s, power D SATA, dual Thunderbolt, and SD, as well as a Kensington lock and a slot load optical drive. Okay, so hold on a second. Here, here, back this up. Four USB 3 ports, power D SATA, and dual Thunderbolt. What are you hooking up to this thing? Anything, apparently. On the back, you've got HDMI in and HDMI out, which is great because it means when this computer's obsolete, even though that won't be for a while, you can continue to use it as a beautiful glass touchscreen monitor. So, thumbs up for that. Now I'm gonna have my lovely assistant from ASUS demonstrate how it folds. Wow. Now you can use it like this, as more of like a tabletop computer. He's gonna show me something compelling. No way. All right, bring it on, bring it on. Yeah, French Canadians don't know how to play hockey anyway, Francis. Oh, no! Now for Asus on the system side, we've got a couple cool notebooks here. This one's an i3, comes in at a very attractive price point. This is the S56C, and consider the following, guys. Very good screen considering the price, okay? Chiclet keyboard, aluminum panel here, solid construction, extremely slim. So you got your VGA, your HDMI, your gigabit ethernet, your super speed USB 3, two USB 2 ports. Look at that, it's only about the thickness of an optical drive and a screen, so it doesn't get much slimmer than that. It is an Ultrabook, and it comes in at between $600 and $700 for this particular configuration. So you got six gigs of RAM, obviously you've got Windows 8, a 500 gig hard drive, and 24 gigs of SSD storage as a hybrid drive, giving you that, those quick response times. So if you put it into sleep mode, you'll see that it'll actually wake up in only a couple seconds, which is one of the requirements from Intel for any Ultrabook. Give it a sec. Actually, we might have to press something. Oh, now it's in sleep. Okay, there. Now we'll see how fast it wakes. There we go. All right. Fast wake up from sleep. Next, we've got the X202. So this is a very similar ID where you've got the aluminum panels here. 
This, however, is a touchscreen notebook, unlike the other one, so hold on a second. Oh, 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 it wants us to activate Windows. We've only got a demo version of Windows on here right now, so you guys are going to have to forgive me. But this is a touchscreen model, 4 gigs RAM, 500 gig hard drive, 8 hour battery life, and again, very, very, very slim profile. So what you've come to expect from an ultra portable notebook. So you've got your SD reader, your USB, your VGA. On the other side, you've got your HDMI, super speed USB 3. This is a very popular design these days, and I love it because it allows you to get a full-size gigabit Ethernet port into a small device like this, which I still think is important, or USB 2 and a Kensington log. And then this one right here is kind of the star of the show. This is the TF600, so as is typical for an ASUS Transformer branded product, it is available as a standalone tablet. So in this case, we can... Sorry. Where is it? Yeah, there we go. We can disengage it from the base station just like this. And it is all of a sudden a super slim Windows RT tablet. Then, in order to get more battery life, a touchpad and a keyboard, all you gotta do is stick it into a dock. The dock also gives you a USB port as well as a... What the heck is that? Okay, just a sec, guys. Yeah, I derped there. That's the, uh, that's the dock power connector so that you can actually charge the base and so that you can charge the entire device once it's plugged in together because obviously you won't have access to that one once they are connected together. So on the tablet itself, you've got your power button, you've got your micro, H, uh, micro HDMI. You've got your, aha, here we go, uh, your rock, volume rocker as well as, where's the micro SD slot? It's around here somewhere. HDMI. Is it in there? Oh yeah, there you go. So there's your micro, micro, uh, micro SD. So Windows RT, what's great about this? It's powered by Tegra 3, it's super light, so it's a quad-core processor, it's got a super IPS plus panel, which basically is kind of like the TF700, where it's probably the most readable tablet out there, I mean, obviously other than Asus's own competing IPS plus tablets, when you're outdoors, when there's a lot of ambient light around you. So all you gotta do is switch it into IPS plus mode in order to get access to that. If you're not familiar already with Windows RT, it's basically like Windows 8, with the only disadvantage being, so you can turn volume up and down, with the only disadvantage being that you can't install desktop applications. That said, it comes with Office 2013 preloaded, so you can actually use this as a full-scale productivity device, unlike what we've seen in the past, with Android and iOS devices, where you've actually got a proper computer once you connect it to the dock, including being able to work on spreadsheets, Word documents, and even PowerPoint presentations, and it comes with OneNote as well. And of course, the crazy Russian wouldn't be a crazy Russian if he didn't build a crazy gaming setup like this. So this is three 55-inch Samsung TVs running off of a tiny mini ITX computer in the back that's sitting in a 50 inch prodigy. We'll make our way over there. We've got a play seat with a Logitech G27 racing wheel on it as well as a pretty sweet uh, speaker setup. Let's go around to the other side. Pointing over here. So, so for things like racing games, this kind of surround setup is just ridiculous. There's the computer that powers the whole thing. So you can use either a, a modern NVIDIA card or the last couple generations of AMD cards to run a surround gaming setup like this. Very, very, very cool stuff. Now we're at the Xbox booth with Clinton from Microsoft. Who's Howdy. Gonna, thank you. Who's going to show us his Surface tablet running Xbox Smart Glass with an Xbox. Bear in mind, this is all running off of his phone, you guys. So it's like 3G and 3G and tethered and just... <laughs> Terrible networking experience, so don't judge it too much based on the responsiveness here. Okay, go for it. Alrighty, so right now we're just at a blank sort of Xbox Live starting station. Now from here we can actually launch any apps that are available here. So for instance, I'll play this on my Xbox, this MSN app here. So now it's going to bring up on the TV directly from the smart glass. Again, guys, don't judge the speed, <laughs> right? So from here, instead of using your full controller, we can then just go from the smart glass and flick around. I find smaller flicks for individual boxes and then bigger swipes for... You'll be able to see that. Just move back a bit. Oh, you jumped in there, I said, yeah. 
There we go. Very cool stuff. Click on a video, and now it's going to play that video. Now you were explaining that with some content, you can actually take it with you on the go and continue to play it on your tablet if you have to go to the can or something. Absolutely. Awesome. So we have a small button down here. The small button down here, when that lights up, you're able to take the content playing on your screen, bring it onto this screen, and then continue on, maybe going to the kitchen to grab a snack or answer the door and pick the pizza. All right. Want to show us the game? Yes. Yeah. So this is exciting here. So what, what, what happens here is if we go into Switch, we go into Xbox Guide. Oh, you want to see that too. So we go, we'll go into the guide. Okay. Yeah. We're going to play a game. So now with some games and some content like videos and stuff like that, what will happen is the actual producers of the content will allow you to have extra content. So for instance we got Forza here, they've created extra content for the smart glass. Okay, give us a second, we'll show you that in a minute. Alright, so now we're in the race here on this main screen. What the smart glass allows us to do is have secondary content on here. So there's GPS, you guys. We can see he's a terrible driver. <laughs> Look at this guy. He's all over the road. I'd never take a ride from a Microsoft guy. <laughs> Don't drink a drive. Yeah. Very cool stuff, though. So thanks for checking out our Xbox Connect booth here at the show. And moving right along. Welcome to the Windows 8 launch party here at Aberdeen Mall, where I am experiencing Wow, that's some pretty good uh, parkour we got going on here. Where I'm experiencing the NCIX PC booth, which was created by the one and only Crazy Russian himself. Crazy Russian, tell us about this computer. So this is our first out of the gate AMD FX new generation based machine. The Vesta FX N1. The whole concept behind it was to jam as much performance and value into one attractively priced package. So this thing comes with 8 core processor, 7870 graphics card, which you can see is pretty comfortable running Triple HD IP to setup in one of the latest games, nevertheless, as well. And uh, this is uh, one of the machines I'm actually pretty proud of because never before could you get an 8 core performance together with a performance class graphics, something actually capable of running an IP to setup for a price point like this. Because I mean, the three monitors are like what, 400 bucks to access in. So the whole setup is like 1.5K, never before, but end to the X, that's what we do. So I've temporarily taken over the Kingston booth where they have on display any huge variety number of Kingston products that they have. They actually used to have one of their HyperX USB drives, but I kind of took it because I needed it for a demo. That thing writes at over 100 megabytes per second in USB 3 mode. They've also got their latest SSDs on display from their HyperX as well as their SSD Now line. Uh, they've got their HyperX memory as well as their more normal memory. This is HyperX as well, but this is red. They now have red HyperX memory, which is something that we haven't seen before from Kingston. Also featured at the Kingston booth is the legendary Rex himself. So who knows, maybe if you were to stop by, you'd have a chance to get a Rex. Yeah, they got a few of them down there. So don't for, yeah. You know what this reminds me of? A face. What do you guys think? He's kind of got the nose for it. Welcome to the Antec booth where we are very focused on their new line of products and Antec mobile products. So I've actually already done unboxings and overviews of their SP1 speaker. So this is sort of like uh, sort of like a jam box by Jawbone, except it doesn't distort the distort distort in high volume. So uh, personally, I prefer it in a very big way compared to the jam box. We've also got their wireless headphone guy right here. So this is a battery powered, uh, it's a little wireless receiver here so you can kind of clip this to your arm or wherever you want to clip it. You can run your headphones up here. It uses Bluetooth to get uh, music data off of something like an MP3 player or whatever else. You've also got built-in controls. So there's your pairing button, your forward and back buttons as well as uh, volume control on this side. So that's pretty cool as well. And then just sort of your low cost but also feature-rich headphones. So these, uh, these in-ear 
These in-ear headphones actually come with three little tips here, which is pretty standard, and then they've got a tangle-free cord, which means that if you take them and like put them in your pocket, like I usually do with my headphones, in fact, I probably have, no, I don't have my headphones in my pocket, then you'll be able to easily untangle them, which hopefully I can do. Aha, yes, without any hassle. And finally, we've got a couple of mobile batteries. So these are awesome because you can use them to charge your phone or run any other USB powered devices and you just charge them up, take them with you. I actually keep one in my bag. I know Slick keeps one in his bag. And then this guy right here is, wow, really? Four ports. And is capable of charging high current devices such as an iPad. So you can actually see one in action right over here. So it's powered. So it's very convenient compared to having wall warts that all of your devices run off of. I mean, how many times you run into that where your bedside table has one outlet next to it and you've got like your iPad one and then you got like your Galaxy one and then there's no room for anything else? Now you can just use the USB cables. You got up to two amps of charging power off of each one and then it just runs off of a single cord. And of course, they've got some ITX enclosures, which are cool and everything, as well as a gigant... I haven't even seen this before. Are you guys serious? No, it's just for decoration. Oh, this is just for decoration. Like, okay, that's good. Taiwan. I packed that straight from Taiwan from Antec HQ. <laughs> All right, well, there's a one-of-a-kind Antec desk fan here as well, but don't worry. That's not something that anyone's going to be asking you to buy anytime soon. So thank you for checking out the Antec booth with the featured showcase of Antec Mobile products. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos, especially of the NCIX Windows 8 launch party.